Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I got five projects you can do for under 20 bucks to keep you, your wife, your kids, your husband, all of you busy through this quarantine business. The first one we're going to go over is Giant Jenga, and you've probably seen this one before, and I'm going to show you all the steps to make it, plus a few ideas to help make it your own, or really get the kids involved to keep them busy for a few hours. I wouldn't try to keep the kids busy on the miter saw, because what you're going to need here is 54 10 and a half inch long pieces, and Technically, you could be done right here because you can see you have a complete Jenga set. It's ready to go. We're going to make ours a little bit nicer, and we're going to start off with the half-inch roundover bit to get those sharp corners rounded off. And any of these projects you can make as nice or as basic as you want. I kind of went middle of the road. I just sanded mine to 100 grit. I just wanted them to be relatively smooth. If you wanted to spend all day or maybe get the kids sanding all day, I definitely recommend going to a higher grit. But for me, I was just wanted to get it to that 100 grit to get make them semi-smooth. After that, came over, and I'm just going to cap this with a box, and you'll see here what we're doing. And this is going to be a holder, a setup, and like a transportation device for all those Jenga pieces, so you don't have to have a whole stack of loose Jenga pieces. I used Tight Bond 3 wood glue, finished nails, and screws to cap it off, and they will be moving around a fair amount of weight, so I do recommend screwing and gluing it. Um, not entirely necessary. If you had deck screws laying around, you could use those too. Don't think you have to have special wood screws just for this, but those tapered bits do make it really nice to get just a nice perfect squeeze out. Again, just went to 100 grit using some old primer I had. Nothing fancy, just super basic job. And we're going to see if it works. Yeah, a little awkward, but it works all right. And this next step, I think the kids could have a lot of fun with because I had a lot of fun with it. And I love experimenting with wood dyes. And you can see there, this is a green. It's not the prettiest green, but you can mix up your own color, blend these colors. There's some purple. I mean, this trans tint, they make pretty much every color available. There was an orange that I actually liked a lot more than I thought I would. And you'll see uh, what I did with it here in just a second. But the black is cool too. Don't use a regular black stain. It just uh, is more of a black paint. I really liked how this black dye works. I use it on a lot of projects. And because I went to Oregon State, decided to go black, orange, and white with all of my pieces. I first started to do the whitewash stain, and it didn't really do anything. It just kind of dulled the, the wood look a little bit. So I went with this white primer, which... I don't know if I'd do it again. It looks nice, but it doesn't slide quite as well as the dyed pieces. So all in all, I think it looks cool, but uh, you can see that I don't move a lot of the white pieces because they don't tend to slide quite as well. So use the paint at your own risk. But since I didn't have any kids, I had to play with myself to show that it worked. And yeah, not too bad. So there you go. Fun project. The next project we're going to do is one of those cool balancing wine bottle holders. And we're going to make a few different styles just to kind of experiment with it. And one of my followers on Instagram, I'd reached out to everybody and asked for some ideas. And he gave me this idea and also gave me all the measurements from the ones that he'd done. So I will have a whole blog on this if you want kind of expanded written instructions. And I'll include that in the description below. But they're really a lot more simple than you think. I, I'm not a physicist, so it didn't really make sense to me. But if you follow the numbers, they actually work really well. What I found was the thickness of the wood didn't matter. The length of the wood didn't really matter. What mattered is that 45 degree angle and that six and seven eighths inch distance from the bottom to the center of the hole. I should also say that the size of the hole did matter and this was an inch and a half inch hole that I made with a Forstner bit. You could use really any type of bit though as long as it's an inch and a half. The rest of it was just for looks and I used my half inch roundover bit just to round over all the edges, make it a little bit more finished looking. And as with any of these projects, you can make them as nice or as basic as you want. And I sanded them up to 220 grit, I believe. And Osmo is one of my go-to finishes. You can use really any finish you want. I'll show you what I did here in a little bit um, to go a little bit more basic. You want just like a Home Depot finish. But the Osmo is a nice wipe on, looks really natural, uh, wears really well, won't show fingerprints or anything like that. This here I did, this was just Home Depot white wood, just regular scrap one by four, and I dyed it purple, and I think it looks pretty ugly. Um, but I want to show that you can do something a little bit different. If you got some kids that want to make something for mom, and she loves purple, I used just basic shellac here, so purple and shellac if you want, or you can go a black dye that I had sanded back, then added the Osmo. Here's more orange dye on quilted maple. This is kind of a fancy, nice piece of wood. So um, again, make them as nice or as basic as you want. If you're paying close attention, you notice that a ring in the middle is actually orange previously. And that's because I did this, sanded it all off because I didn't like the way it looked and redid it. So I'm just using this as an opportunity to practice a new skill, get a little bit better with those wood dyes. 
You can see here we're supporting our local vineyard, Bradley Vineyard. They have some really great wines and they're local here to Oregon. And they're pretty stable, these wine bottle holders too. So kind of cool, a lot easier than I thought it would be. They hold almost any wine bottle shape. There's some Pinots, Willa Kenzie, Willamette Valley Vineyard, all kinds of good local Oregon wines. All right, the next project we're going to do is also drink related, and that's going to be making some really cool wood coasters from this beautiful black walnut burl. I have made a lot of these coasters in the past and I actually sell them around Christmas and Mother's Day and so I have a fair amount of experience with it and I even made a full YouTube video just on making these coasters so if I want if I rush a little bit too much here feel free to click the link in the video description for kind of an expanded video on the same project. Basically we're just going to rip some eight millimeter strips and we're going to keep them as long as we can as long as we can and flattening with the drum sander, going over here, sanding them all the way up to 180 grit before we end up cutting them down on our crosscut sled here. And four inches by four inches I found is about perfect. These were just under, so I think they're about three and seven eighths and that will still be fine. But if you can choose, I like a good four inch by four inch coaster. And since these finish at right about a quarter inch thick, I found the eighth inch roundover bit works about perfect for giving a nice natural rounded edge that you can pick up pretty easily, move around. So I'm hitting both sides with that eighth inch roundover bit. And for finishing, I did something totally different here. I don't actually recommend this. I'm experimenting with a slow setting epoxy because again, we're kind of learning, using this as an opportunity to practice a new skill. Normally an Armaseal or Odie's oil is probably a better coaster finish, but this was just a kind of an experimental test for me. I apologize in advance because I couldn't get the material shipped in time due to this whole virus business right now. So I'm gonna show you how I made this bottle opener. And all I did was use a Forstner bit to drill an inch and a quarter inch hole as deep as I could for the lower one, as shallow as I could for the upper one, so that I could still fit uh, two or three of those rare earth magnets in there. The only thing you need to be cautious of is don't put your top magnets right behind your bottle opener. And I've done that on a different bottle opener and that causes all the bottle caps to stick to your actual opener and it won't allow them to drop down. So here, this one works great. I used quite a few magnets in this one so it will hold a ton of bottle caps. And the bow ties were just something I was experimenting with when I first started woodworking. And so I used this as an opportunity to kind of practice a new skill that I was trying to learn. And if you still think that all of these projects are a little too advanced and you don't want to give them a go, I promise you, you could do this project. This is the easiest one that I could think of. And I found an old curtain rod in our attic, cut some random lengths. You don't have to have a metal cutting wheel like this. You could uh, just use a wood screw and I'll show you how we could do that here in a second. I wanted to make mine a little bit easier to assemble and disassemble. So I drilled a hole not even really close to the center, used some CA glue, which is also known as super glue. And I put those, the ends of those bolts, just hand threaded them in there, let that glue harden after wiping off the excess. And this is going to allow me to use them with these threaded inserts. And again, you don't have to have threaded inserts. They are pretty handy to have around the shop, but you could just throw a wood screw straight through the bottom of the plywood right into your dowel. And it would be just fine. It just wouldn't be able to be taken apart and put back together, you know, a bunch of times quite as easily. And since I was having a lot of fun with the wood dye for these projects, I decided to keep it going with more orange and black. And I just wiped it on, threw a little bit of uh, shellac on there afterwards, threaded them on. And if you're wondering, this is Ring Toss. And I bought those rings for like seven bucks on Amazon. And the game's actually a lot harder than it looks, so I don't need your judgment that I can't win at this kid's game. But I do think that kids could have fun building this, putting it together, staining it dyeing it their own colors, and then getting to actually play with something they built in the end. And here is a quick preview of next week's project. It is some Home Depot scrap wood turned into these cool 3D charred wood coasters. And every week I like to give a little bit of credit, a little bit of props to the people that actually make it through the whole video. So my name is Cam. Start your question or comment with, hey Cam, I'll know you watched the whole video, and I will answer your question first. And if you look at my past videos, you'll realize I am actually really, really good at responding to almost every single comment out there. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thanks again.